The Signal Oil Program. Yes, the Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies independently operated signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Fatal Fraud. The questioning by the Hong Kong police was brief. The suspect's guilt was clear, coldly clear as the murder weapon itself. And it was inevitable that it should end with an official booking for murder. But even though a conviction was a certainty, the motive and circumstances behind the crime were considerably more complex. It had started more than a week ago at a fashionable gathering across the city. A swank social affair with smartly dressed ladies in evening gowns and jewels gentlemen in dinner jackets, and the precise moment might have been when most of the guests adjourned to the library and listened to that well-known voice and stared at the man who spoke. We shall defend our island, uh, whatever the cost may be. Uh, We shall fight on the beaches. Uh, We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. Uh, We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And even if, uh, which I do not for a moment believe, this island for a large part of it was subjugated and starving. Then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle until the new world, with all its power and might, steps forward to the rescue in liberation of the old. Oh, well, I said... A wonderful, Chris, a perfect impersonation. That's our Winnie, all right. You could fool me. Well, that's what he's famous for. Thank you, thank you. Not quite famous. Well, you should be, <laughs> young man. All those voices, why, it's fantastic. No, it's practice, that's all. And the living. <laughs> Is it a good living, Mr. Holmes? Huh? Oh. Oh, Catherine. You haven't met our clever young man. Chris Holmes, Catherine Dorn. How do you do, Miss Dorn? Fine, thank you. And you do very well, Mr. Holmes. Oh? You like the impersonation? Very much. That routine of yours must be quite tiring. <laughs> Don't you think you've earned yourself a cocktail? He certainly has. Now run along, you two. Join me, Miss Dorn. You know, Mr. Holmes, that's exactly why I came over. I hate to drink alone. Alone? You? Oh, don't I'm tell... not really an invited guest, just part of the help, you know, a secretary. Mm-hmm. I'm here with my employer, Albert von Loven. Oh, the importer. Hmm. Know him? <laughs> the very nice old Dutchman. The rosy cheeks, bald head, eyes that sparkle. He holds his head to one side like this when he talks. (laughs) Oh, uh, not impressed, Miss Dorn? Don't you think I do it rather well? You were excellent, Mr. Holmes. Excellent. Uh, come along before the martinis get too wet. you dance as well as you impersonate. Sure, been copying Fred Astaire. I mean it. You mean a lot of things, Catherine. Or, uh, is it the cocktail? How many have you had? Well, I did become a bit impatient waiting while you were talking to Van Loven. You shouldn't have. I was acting in your behalf. Oh? Mm-hmm. You are invited out to his home for a few days. 
What? Whose idea? Mine. I thought it might lead to something for you. Lead to something? Hmm? I think your talents are wasted on nightclubs. Thanks, but the importing business isn't something one picks up overnight. No, Catherine, I'm afraid now, that... Now, relax, relax. You're not going to turn Mr. Van Loven down. He wouldn't like that. Neither would I. You know, you're odd, Catherine. So are you. And two odds make an even match. Don't they, Chris? Catherine is an interesting girl, isn't she, Chris? And you're pleased with her interest in you. Pleased and a little flattered. Because she's easily the most attractive girl at the party. And the following weekend at Van Loven's, you're even more impressed. Her friendliness puts you perfectly at ease. And you feel almost a part of this way of living. It's a very pleasant way, isn't it, Chris? Dinners on the terrace. Brandy in the drawing room. Excellent company. And later in the evening in Van Loven's private office, Catherine again. She's standing by a recording machine this time. What's this going to be, baby? Hong Kong's version of Hong Kong's blues? You'll <laughs> see, Chris. DSL calling Canton office. Attention, Carter. Regarding back orders on shipments of oriental drugs, cancel and hold in warehouse until further instructions. Please notify us immediately regarding jade and artwork. Regards, San Loven. Hey, what's this all about? Don't you want to learn the importing business, make big money, opportunities for young, ambitious men? Is this the uh, special mail order course? <laughs> and I'm the teacher. Hi, teacher. Hi, Chris. Come here. You like it? Better than an apple. Yeah. Uh, Catherine, why'd you ask me here? I'm, I'm just a guy kicking around. I know. Maybe better than you think. Not so sure you do. I'll admit I've been in a few deals that seem shady. Sure. That's what I said. Two odds make an even match. You still haven't told me why you asked me here. Chris, I want you to help me do something. It's simple. He's bringing in some money in a few days, lots of money. The kind we can keep up with. Look, what are you talking about? Van Loven, Chris, and his Canton office. The details don't matter. All that I'm interested in is the money. And me? And you. You know I'm interested in you, Chris. Draw the pictures, honey. The bright boy's a little dazed right now. We're going to get that money. Oh, Chris, it'll be so easy. Yeah? Simino will help us. Who's he? He operates the radio shack here. Oh, that's a nice hobby. Oh, Chris, you're not even listening to me. Don't you want money? Sure. Well, there's plenty, Chris, and it's all coming in by plane, Van Loven's plane. It will land only where he directs. Simino? Mr. Van Loven, he's going to direct his pilot over the radio. Listen, you could change those directions, Chris. You're good. Oh, now, wait a minute. Chris, there's a quarter of a million dollars. More. Quarter of a million? A third of it can be yours. Yeah. But, oh, Catherine, hijacking a plane, that isn't easy. It will be. Seaman Oka and I can handle the pilot once the ship's on the ground. He won't suspect anything until it's too late. We'll tie him up, get out of Hong Kong before Van Loven hears what's happened. Destination? Oh, darling. There's an awful lot of elbow room in Asia. Chris, come on, tell me you'll do it. Take this record and practice Mr. Van Loven's voice. <laughs> That's a breeze, that part. Canton office. Regarding back orders, oriental rocks, cancel. Oh. Uh, what was the rest of it? Uh. Uh, uh, notify us. Jade and artwork and stuff and stuff. Regards, <laughs> Van Loven. Oh, Chris, you know you're marvelous. <laughs> yeah. Say, Cap, you really think we can get away with it? We can. And we will, Chris. We will. You'll do it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. The money, Chris. It's real, not an imitation. You'll see. Sure. You're not either, Catherine. You're right here and real. That much I am sure of. Come here. We're getting out of practice. <laughs> With the prologue of Fatal Fraud, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. 
The English people have a neat way of getting more miles out of each gallon of gasoline. They make their imperial gallon about 20% larger than our American gallon. The drivers out here, however, have found an easier answer to the mileage problem. They simply use Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. And by so doing, they not only enjoy maximum mileage, but also peak performance. For mileage and performance go hand in hand. They're both the result of the extra efficiency today's Signal gasoline coaxes from your motor. So whether you're interested in economy or in driving pleasure, make this test. Try a few tankfuls of Signal gasoline. Keep track of Signal's good mileage. Notice Signal's flashing pickup and smooth, effortless power. See if its performance in your own car doesn't prove why each year more and more drivers throughout the West, from Canada to Mexico, are switching to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. You've made a decision, haven't you, Chris? Yes, you've decided you're going to help Catherine with her plan to hijack her employer's plane arriving in Hong Kong from Canton with almost a quarter of a million dollars aboard. And your part in it is all so simple. You've only to impersonate Albert Van Loven's voice, order the pilot to land at another field where Catherine wants it to land. It's the opportunity of a lifetime, isn't it, Chris? And the future grows brighter and brighter as you think about it the following day. Then that evening, Catherine takes you across the back gardens to a low, rambling building, a good distance away from the house. You find yourself entering the radio room, where you meet René Simonot. René? René, this is Chris Holmes. So this is the famous one, eh? The one with the voices. Hiya, Simonot. He's going to help us, René. Is he? You don't seem enthused, old boy. I am not. He's afraid our little scheme won't work, Chris. There are other ways. Better ways of doing this, Catherine. If you'd only listen to me... Renee, must we go through all that again? With Chris to help us, we cannot fail. I don't like it, that's all. There are better ways. Maybe it's the money that bothers him, Catherine. Getting only a third of the loot instead of half. A third? Catherine, did you tell him that he... Yes. I think he's entitled to a third. I see. (laughs) I look so glum. Third share will buy you a lot of scented hair oil, semen oil. Chris. By the way, what's that you have on now? Eau de violet? Chris. Listen, smart boy. Go, I know it's good for you. Stop, Stop it, Rene. Stop it. You're acting like a child. Let him go. That's better. We've more important things to do than quarrel. What time do you expect the plane to arrive here in Hong Kong? At 11 tomorrow night. Good. We'll be ready, won't we, Chris? As our friend Van Loven would say, We will be ready, Katrina, my dear. (laughs) You see, René, he is good, isn't he? (laughs) Excuse me, Catherine. I have things to do. Excuse me, Catherine. I have things to do. Oh, darling. (laughs) You sound just like René. Yeah. Well, at least we get along, don't we? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, come on, darling. Kath. Mm-hmm. Can you trust him? Simonon? Yes. Yes, I can trust him. What makes you so sure? Oh, I've known him a long time. He's in love with you, isn't he? <laughs> He'd do anything for you. I suppose. Were you in love with him once? What difference does that make? I just asked. He uh, could make trouble for us later. You leave him to me, Chris. I know how to handle him. I know just how to handle Renee. Moments later, you're back on the terrace, mingling with Van Loven's guests. You're being your most charming self, aren't you, Chris? The center of attraction as usual, and you're enjoying every minute of it. Van Loven is standing close by watching you, a quaint little smile on his face. 
Oh, Mr. Holmes is a very, very clever young man, oh, yes. is he not, my friend? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I, Mr. Mean, Lord. Clever. <laughs> I, I dare say there isn't one of us here in this room he could not impersonate. Oh, I, oh. Uh, you, Major Ritten, for example. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Me? Oh, my Lord, I say that. Oh, really? You think so, eh? Well, <laughs> well that's too hard. Well, that's uh, uh, hard. But that Very would be good. perhaps yeah. too simple for our young friend. Uh, perhaps we should have him try someone else. Well, well, right, anybody you say, I'll be glad yeah. to do. Perhaps, Mr. Holmes, you would care to impersonate me. No, I'm try. sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I make it a rule never to subject my host to that sort of punishment. Oh, dear, oh, oh then I am most disappointed. I was certain you were planning a little surprise for me. Uh, surprise? What's what's surprise? surprise? Mr. Van Lomen? Uh, uh, come on, old boy, don't try to get out of this one. My records, Mr. Holmes. I overheard you playing several of them. I thought you were studying my voice. Oh, oh you man, you're always a step ahead of everybody. Uh, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm afraid I, I have a confession to make, Mr. Van Lomen. I did try. I have to admit defeat, afraid I couldn't quite um, oh, come up come to on. it. I, 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 again, I, uh, no, 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 I, really, really, I'd rather not. Huh? Uh, how, how about somebody else? Uh, Anybody Holmes, else? Uh, you could try to impersonate my husband. Well, no, uh, well, well, his I'm voice is rather I unusual. Oh, 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 now, Stella, really, I, I, I don't think Mr. Holmes would be interested. Oh, nonsense, <laughs> nonsense. Now, say something for the man, Edgar. Well, say something, anything. Oh, well, come oh, on. Come on. <laughs> You oblige her, don't you, Chris? And your impersonation of the mild little man goes over well, much to his embarrassment. Then you're called on to do others to the delight of the assembled guests. But through it all, you're a little on edge. You haven't forgotten Van Loven's request that you try to impersonate him. And the rather strange expression on his face when he mentioned having overheard you playing his record. Finally, you manage to break away and look for Catherine. But she's not in the house. And so you wander outside into the garden for a quiet smoke. And then near the radio building, you hear voices. Catherine But I don't like Simono. it, Catherine. I don't like it one bit. Renee, darling, I told you not to worry. But what do we know about him? How can we trust him? Please, let's not argue. I know what I'm doing. Believe me, Renee, I know uh, what I'm doing. He's important to us now. Without him, we haven't a chance. All right. All right, Catherine. We'll do it your way. But once this is over... Yes, darling. Once it's over, then we'll see. We'll see. It disturbs you, Chris, what you've heard. But then you're quick to tell yourself there's nothing to worry about. It's Catherine's way of keeping Simoneau in line, isn't it? And he's important to the success of your plan. You walk back to the house thinking about it. And you're certain that's all there is to it. Catherine is handling Simono in her own way. And yet as you return to your room and prepare to turn in for the night, you promise yourself that you've got to move carefully, very carefully from now on, just in case you find yourself in the middle of a double cross. The following morning at breakfast, you discover that your host has plans for his guests. Motorboating lunch at the Hotel Royale, and then the races. Plans that keep you from seeing Catherine all that day. Then when you and the guests return to the house early that evening, you hurry upstairs to dress for dinner. Chris? Huh? Oh, Catherine. Chris, there's been a slight change in plans. Yeah? The plane has already left Canton. Oh? Simino just told me it's scheduled to arrive here shortly before Nine? Nine? Well, we'll be right in the middle of dinner. Well, I'll tell Van Loven you're not feeling well, that, that, that uh, you won't be down. All right. Now, here, here's the message. Study it. Be at the radio room in an hour. I'll meet you there. A few minutes after eight, you slip out of your room, hurry down the back stairs. Close by, you can hear the laughter of the guests assembled in the main dining hall. You hurry across the garden, enter the radio building. Catherine and Simono are there, waiting for you. From that moment, events move rapidly. Contact is established with the plane. 
You find yourself speaking into the microphone. VSL, this is Albert Van Loven. You will disregard previous instructions to land at Hong Kong Air Base. Proceed to emergency field on Pelang Road for landing. Repeat, please. Disregard previous instructions to land Hong Kong Air Base. Proceed to emergency field on Pelang Road for landing. Got it, Mr. Van Loven. Once the radio has been disabled, there's a dash to the deserted airstrip on Pelang Road. And only a moment after Catherine's break the heavy car to a stop, you hear it in the distance. There it is. The plane. I don't schedule. All right, Renee. Come on. Wait for us here, Chris. Renee and I will meet the plane. Okay, but about that pilot, I won't hold still for murder. Don't worry. He won't be harmed. We'll just tie him up. You watch them as they hurry toward the landing strip. Then the plane circles overhead and comes in for the landing and pulls up to a stop. You sit there, waiting, listening straining to catch some sound, but all is quiet. And then you see two figures hurrying towards you. One of them is carrying a suitcase. Well, how'd it go? Perfectly, Chris. Here, Simono, I'll take that suitcase. Yeah. Oh, nice and heavy. Get in, Renee. Well, now what? Back to town. I've made arrangements for us to leave by boat. I'll drop you and Renee off at a small cafe near the waterfront. You'll wait there till you hear from me. Okay, baby. You're calling the signals. Relax, Simono. Relax. I don't like this waiting. Forget it. Enjoy the floor show. Ha, <laughs> ha, Ah, she's cute. Quite a dancer. Yes. Real cute. Where are you going, Simono? To get another drink. Our waiter seems too busy watching the show. As you sit there watching the girl perform in the center of the smoke-filled room, you're suddenly aware of someone staring at you. An old man standing a few feet away. A look of uncertainty on his face. Indecision. And then swiftly he moves toward you, hands you a slip of paper, and darts away into the crowd. You unfold the paper and read. We will leave on the midnight plane for Saigon, the two of us, darling. Been just the two of us from the beginning. Come at once. This diagram will show you just where to meet me. Catherine. You stare at the paper in your hand. The carefully drawn diagram of the meeting place. The rendezvous where Catherine will be waiting. A quiet side street. Suddenly it hits you, Chris. A question night through your mind. Did the old man make a mistake, Chris? Was the note intended for Simono? You're certain it was, aren't you? It's been Simono and Catherine all along. You should have suspected that after what you overheard in the garden last night. You slip the paper back into your pocket as Simono approaches. Did I miss anything? Huh? Oh, uh, no. Not a thing, pal. Uh, got a cigarette? Here. Here, help yourself. Oh, is this all you got? You don't like our local brands? Sorry. I always like to feel my level best. There's a tobacco shop down the street. On the other side. Uh, don't get lost, hmm? I'll try not to. Shall I draw you a diagram? Diagram? Hmm. <laughs> no, thanks. I already have one. <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a suggestion to you folks who may be planning a trip over the coming Memorial Day weekend. You'll find one of Signal's new road maps a great help in suggesting interesting places to go and the best way to get there. Being just off the press, these new Signal maps have all the latest road changes and conditions. They're jumbo in size for rapid reading but have the improved accordion fold for easier handling. And you'll like the many extra features not included in ordinary maps, such as a radio log showing where on your dial you'll find your favorite programs as you travel, a list of interesting places to visit, a western state's mileage chart, and enlarged sections of metropolitan areas. So for more travel fun, 
get one of these new free maps from your signal dealer. And, of course, power your car with signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Waiting here in the shadows for Catherine, you feel a little foolish about the way you've been used, don't you, Chris? Only the money matters now. You'll be able to take it for yourself and leave them, Catherine and Simono. That's the way it is, isn't it? The way it's been from the beginning, you're certain of it. You were just a puppet who could help them. The man with the many voices. Especially the one that sounded exactly like Albert Van Loven. Well, it's all over now. Your foolish dream that there was anything more to it than a coldly calculated hijacking job. As you stand here in the darkness waiting for Catherine, it becomes annoying. The way her words come drifting back, mixing you up, challenging your judgment. Two odds make an even match, don't they, Chris? The money, darling, we can get away with it and have it all to ourselves. I love you, Chris. Remember that, I love you. Yeah, sure, sure, you love me. You tighten, draw back into the shadows at the sound of a twig snapping. Then you see her, Catherine approaching slowly toward you. Your eye catches something else, too. The glint of moonlight on the gun in her hand. Suddenly, your blood runs cold as you realize the real reason for that note. It was sent to lure someone out here to his death. But you've already decided the note was meant for Rene Simonov. Or was it? Perhaps you're the one scheduled to be Catherine's victim. Who is it? Who's there? As Catherine's voice comes through the darkness, you know you've got to decide. You can answer with either voice. Your own or Simonov's. And your decision will mean life or death. Then, as suddenly as it came, the panic leaves you. Instantly, the whole thing seems clear. You're a fool to think otherwise. The note and the bullet in Catherine's gun are meant for you. But there's still a way out, isn't there, Chris? You will speak to her as Rene Simono. She'll come to you. Disarming her will be easy and the money will be all yours. You wait for her to speak again. Answer me. Who's there? Don't be afraid, darling. It's me, Rene. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. And now, Signal Oil Company extends congratulations to the Armed Forces Radio Service on its seventh anniversary for bringing top entertainment to our troops overseas as well as to those in hospitals and cantonments here in the United States. We are also pleased that AFRS has chosen to rebroadcast the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, regularly to our military forces overseas. Featured in tonight's story were Paul Fries, Kathy Lewis, and Gerald Moore. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone and Adrian Jean Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>